Kali Linux is a distribution of Linux that is specifically designed for penetration testing, digital forensics, and other security-related tasks. A live version of Kali allows the user to boot the operating system from a USB drive, rather than installing it on a computer's hard drive. This is useful for running Kali on a computer that you don't own, or for troubleshooting a computer that is having problems. Persistence in this context refers to the ability to save changes made to the system, such as installed software or saved files, across reboots. This means that when the user boots Kali from the USB drive, they will have access to their installed software and saved files, rather than starting with a fresh version of the system every time. Creating a bootable USB drive is a simple process that can be done using a variety of tools. Here is a general overview of how to create a bootable USB drive. This guide also works with Kali Linux old or upcoming versions. For this purpose, our requirement will be a minimum of 8 GB spent drive. The second thing is the Kali Linux live disk image. We need a tool to write ISO images to pen drive. So, I am here using Rufus. Before getting started make sure you have subscribed to my channel. If not yet subscribed then click the subscribe button and also press the bell icon to stay tuned with my upcoming videos. So let's get dive in. Firstly, download the software or operating system that you want to install on the USB drive. Here, I am going to use Kali Live. Download the latest version of Kali Linux from the official website and save it to your computer. Download Rufus, which can be used to create a bootable USB drive. Insert a USB drive with at least 8 GB of free space into your computer, and then run Rufus. Now, browse the Kali Linux Live Image ISO image. Now, set the persistent partition size. Now, click on Start to begin the process of creating the bootable USB drive. Wait for the process to complete. This may take a few minutes depending on the size of the ISO file and the speed of your computer. Once the process is complete, you can safely remove the USB drive from your computer and use it to boot Kali Linux Live on another computer. Kali Linux Live USB with persistence is now ready to use. Now, insert the USB drive into the computer and boot Kali Linux from the BIOS boot menu. If you don't know how to turn it on, you can Google for this. Now, from the boot menu, choose your plugged USB drive. In my case, it is SunDisk Ultra. In the Kali boot menu, select Live System and press Enter. The menu may look slightly different depending on your version of Kali. Once the Kali Live system is booted up, now, we will have to mount persistence partition, if not, when we will boot Kali Linux from pendrive, each time it will automatically lose previously saved data. Now, we have to mount persistence partition. To mount persistence partition, open a new terminal and type the sudo f disk hyphen l command. This terminal does not look good, let me customize it to green on black. Now, run f disk hyphen l. You will see several entries for partitions and devices listed. Look for your USB drive. It will have two partitions. The persistence partition should appear as Linux under the type column. Here, we can see the USB drive with a 7 GB partition and a persistence partition with the device name SDB2. This device's name may be different from your setup. Make sure you have the right one before continuing. Now, create a new mount point called My USB. Create a new directory within the MNT directory with the name of your choice. 
Now, mount the USB partition that is SDB2 with the newly created directory. Now, we have successfully mounted the partition with live bootable system. To unmount the partition, use you mount command line utility. If you face any problem, then you can create a configuration file with content slash union, otherwise, it is not recommended. Once the process is complete, you will have a bootable Kali Linux USB drive with persistence enabled. To verify if persistence is enabled or not, let me create a text file and then again boot KaliLiv from a USB drive. We're done! Now, turn on your computer and boot from USB again and from now on always select the live system. As you can see, our previously created sample text file has not yet been removed. This means that any changes made to the system, such as installed software or saved files, will be saved to the USB drive and will persist across reboots. This allows you to carry your entire Kali Linux setup with you on a USB drive and use it on any computer that can boot from a USB drive. Happy hacking! If you have any doubts or queries related to this video, Write me a comment in my comment section.